Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up on this week's show, Charlie's chasing Charlie with one of our big fox contenders. We're mimicking Monty's calling bucks in Bedfordshire. But first, we're at Pine Forest Lodge in the Cairngorms with the winners of Sporting Shooters Ultimate Stalking Competition. In the July and August issues of Sporting Shooter, we offered two readers a chance to get their hands on some top spec shooting kit and the opportunity to sample some Scottish deer stalking. Alan Waite and Sean Smith were the lucky winners and we've come to the Pine Forest Lodge in the Cairngorms to meet them. The lodge is owned by Andy who runs Swillington Shooting Supplies in Leeds. His hospitality and some excellent stalking should ensure the winners will be looked after and get some use out of their prizes. Talking of which, I suppose I'd better dish them out. We've had hundreds and hundreds of entries and two lucky winners, so I just want to say congratulations and thank you very much to uh, Sean and Alan. Come and get the prizes. Joining us is Matt Ryan, Vice President of Rivers West, all the way from the States. Mark Kahn, Zeiss's man in the UK, and Stuart Hamilton, representing Lacoste Boots. After the formalities, time for a bite to eat and talk about what tomorrow will bring. Unfortunately, it's looking like rain. We join Alan, who is dressed for success, while his Zeiss Duralite scope is back at base waiting to be zeroed. Our guide today is Robert. He's taking us through some woodland on top of the moor, and he's hoping to find both fallow and reds. It isn't long before we hear some exciting bellows coming from across the valley. But when we break cover, the heartbeats return to normal, as the deer are the other side of the fence and a good half mile away. Sometimes you just get a feeling that things aren't going your way. Very slowly, we cover miles as quietly as possible. There are signs of deer everywhere, but nothing is showing. Robert takes us to all the usual haunts, but maybe the rain, plus the pile and construction work being done in this part of the Cairngorms is disturbing the deer too much. So, no shot for Alan, but he's still a happy man, claiming to have never won anything before in his life. I just see the competitions in the sporting shooter now and again, and I thought, when I seen the ultimate stalking competition, you know, I've always been stalking, I thought, I'll, I'll have a go. And uh, I entered it, and... I just couldn't believe it when uh, I got a phone call saying that I was one of the lucky winners and and all this River West gear and everything, it, it's just unbelievable. We crawled oh, about three hours up the hill and we were in the bottom of a stream most of the way and absolutely bone dry, so it's uh, brilliant. Sean has also missed out, but there'll be another chance later. And as they grab brunch, we grab a word with our American guest, who is on his first trip to Scotland. Uh, we developed Rivers West for the uh, wet weather of the Pacific Northwest in uh, the United States, uh, a lot like the weather here in Scotland. Um, but we uh, launched it here in the UK uh, one year ago. So I'm up here to do a little bit of product testing and to get from the people in the field exactly how it's performed so far for the, the British uh, shooter. Matt knows that understanding the local conditions is important for a company which was founded in the States but has become very popular here. Hunters are the same kind of everywhere you go, but uh, the different tools of the trade that they use and uh, the different scenarios and uh, environments they hunt in, uh, it's, it's very important to realize that how we hunt in America is not necessarily how you'd hunt in England or Scotland and I want to make sure that the kit we develop is uh, good for everybody. Mid-afternoon and the Scottish weather has improved. Even the black grass have come out to play. So what does this part of the world have to offer our stalkers? We're three mile of um, moor and um, two large woods with red fallow and rowing to stalk um, as well as uh, salmon fishing in the river not 300 yards away from us. We've <laughs> got this lovely lodge behind us. Yes. Um, how many people can you take? I mean, can you take Ooh. big groups? Can you take well, families? We can, but it's a bit stressful. A lot of so you know, you know, usually it's four or five, you know, something like that, and then we can, you know, look after them properly rather than uh, rush around and burn the toast and things. Have this lot been yeah. well behaved then? They've been very good. Yes, uh, they've had plenty of burnt toast though. When the winners return, there's been some success. Sean has shot a fallow pricket. Unfortunately, Alan has missed out again. Are they rutting yet? Are they, you know, are... They're just, just beginning to. We've just seen some, or well, one big fellow back on the way back. 
just marking his rutting ground, having a grunt or two. Yeah. And some red stags out on the hill just starting to roar, but not really getting into it yet. Because it's been quite mild up here, hasn't it? <clears throat> I think it has, yeah, from yeah. what they were saying. But it's getting near the time here where they've got to have a go, isn't it? Yeah, they can't wait for too long, can they? <laughs> no, nope, they can't. And, and you walk in stalking today or yeah. up in the high seats? Walking. Yeah. We were going to get in a doe box, but we shot this one right in front of the doe box we were going to get in. Oh, OK. So we bled him, carried on carried on walking around the woods, stalking around. Yeah. Came back round, picked him up and back just came. got back. The guys are both experienced shots and have been a pleasure to stalk with. And this is one type of competition we'll certainly be doing again. From stalking stags to stalking stories, here's David on the new stump. This is Field Sports Britain News. The government's Deer Initiative organisation warns that rubbish in the countryside is threatening rutting deer. This fallow buck, put out of its misery by Field Sports Channel's Roy Lupton, was tangled with rope and wire, with the material cutting into its throat. The Deer Initiative says there are more deer in populated areas where there's more litter, so they're more likely to get tangled in rubbish, such as netting, packaging or silage wrapping. This little guy decided to, uh, to fray in an area that obviously had quite a lot of rope um, and some wire, and uh, he's, uh, he's ended up getting himself in a right pickle. It's uh, twisted all round his head, it's gone round his throat, over his eyes, um, and uh, obviously it, uh, the, the, uh, the breaking strain uh, is too much, he wouldn't have been able to get it off. A major report in the Observer newspaper has revealed that fox hunting is still going strong. In a well-written article, the left-wing newspaper reveals that hunts still chase foxes, that hunts themselves are cornerstones of countryside communities, and that a new generation of hunt followers are taking up the sport. The last weekend in October is the date for many hunts opening meets. Find out where yours is via your Countryside Alliance local representative. Visit www.countrysidealliance.org.uk and click on Our Regions. One of Britain's best-known shooting shops is now open seven days a week. UK Custom Shop in Droitwich is opening on Sundays, starting this Sunday, the 23rd of October 2011. To celebrate, the owner of Wildcat Rifles has a range of offers on Nico Sterling Scopes, Sterling Rifles, Parker Hale Rifles and Pointer Shotguns. They're also offering their Wildcat Chili on opening day, made with venison, not cats. Visit www.wildcatrifles.co.uk for more details. The Scottish Government may bring in laws banning fish farms from some coastal areas. It could follow Norway, where the law has restricted the spread of farms after growing concerns over the depletion of wild stocks. A BBC documentary, Scotland's Fishy Secrets, reported how anglers claim parasites from farms are partly to blame for falls in wild salmon and sea trout stocks. And finally, the fox call we featured on last week's programme has been a runaway success. We sold out of the silver fox call within hours of the programme going out, and we've put two UK distributors in touch with the Australian makers, www.silverfoxwhistles.com. If you're still desperate to get hold of one, several viewers have told us about websites which show how to make your own similar call. On YouTube, search for how to make a Tenterfield-style fox whistle. You're now up to date with Field Sports Britain News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thanks David, nice suit. Now over to Charlie, who's in Hampshire for a spot of foxing with Daryl Barnard. Hampshire fox shooter Daryl Barnard got in touch with Field Sports Channel after we ran our story about big foxes of more than 30 pounds in weight. He says Hampshire foxes are getting bigger too. It was the work of moments to decide to go and join him for a night on them on a farm near Winchester. The hare population has gone right down, the partridge population is down. And it's all due to the foxes. Um, it's like in the last few months we've had 40, 50 foxes and just on two farms in, in this area. It's, they're just never ending. It's, we've got to keep them down. Um, the bird population is slowly starting to, to rise again and the hare population is going up, so we've just got to keep on top of the foxes. We drive round and round this farm. There is plenty of wildlife. Small groups of roe deer are feeding in the fields. 
We see a fox on the skyline, but Daryl will not take a shot with his 22-250 Seiko. And there are lots and lots of rabbits. This kind of fox shooting suits Hampshire, where there are plenty of easy estate roads with good views of rolling countryside. But Daryl would be nowhere without his keen lamper. You are a partridge keeper as well as everything else, as well as a, a top-level lamper. What damage do foxes do to partridges at this time of year when they're all grown up? Oh, they still they they'll still take a massive a proportion of your bird. So it's a uh, yeah. The more you can kill and control, then uh, the the more birds you'll have running around, and uh, makes you shooting a lot. We do see one, and Daryl is onto it quickly. He shoots. It goes down, but we drive over and can't find it in the long stubble. The farmer picks it up the following morning. One down, plenty to go. And we didn't see it, so can't confirm the size of these Hampshire foxes. Oh well, have to go back and give it another go soon. Staying in the home counties, we're now after the UK's smallest deer species, the muntjac. But how responsive will they be to Roy's choicest chat-up lines? Today we are conducting an experiment. We know Roy gets some pretty good results with his bootleo in the row rut, but is intrigued to find out if the call stirs the juices with the smallest of our deer species, the muntjac. Muntjac don't have a season as such, breeding all year round. But are they going to be interested enough to come and have a closer look at Roy? We're out in Bedfordshire with Mike and Jason who run muntjacstalker.com. They've been giving stalkers the chance to get close to Munties for years, but they've recently taken on some more ground so can comfortably take off 150 head a year. They also have Chinese water deer, but that's for another day. What we'll do, Roy, is we'll walk down to these uh, oak trees. Right. This time you often find that the winch are underneath the oak trees, yep. with, uh, eating the acorns. And then we'll cut across the next field uh, out in the acorn, just gra glass around the edge of the um, set-aside strips. And then we'll get into the meadows and often find around the edge of those okay, uh, grass well. fields. And uh, we'll go from there. And so hopefully the weather will uh, brighten up for us a little bit. Okay. For the first 45 minutes we make our way across some pasture. Muntjac can sometimes be found browsing along the hedgerow here. Unlike Roe, they don't seem to be bothered by livestock. With no signs we cross over to a field with a cover crop. It seems an ideal chance to give the call a blast. You reckon it might be worth a call in there, just see if anything moves. Give it a try. Yeah. Plenty of cover around the edge of it as well. Nice bit of bramble cover. A few oak trees. Well be. Excellent. Browsing around underneath those. Way too thick at this time of year to spot them underneath there, so give them a call now. From the right, we get a quick response. A buck bounding through the low vegetation. He spots us, and as quickly as he appears, he hightails it out of there. It's a great first effort. The old patello does it again, so not a bad response, first squeak. And we had one come, uh, come trotting in there, so uh, he came into, what, 20, 30 yards there, um, but didn't present the shot, so uh, he, uh, unfortunately, he made us something. Obviously, he was just standing out, and we just thought we'd give it a try. We cover some more ground, skirting around the field margins. A lack of deer means Roy has an excuse to call again. Another buck just has to have a look. He appears on the edge of the wood a good few hundred yards away. He looks like he's coming in our direction, but he ducks off into the hedgerow. For a moment we wonder if he might pop out closer to us, but no go. I think I overcalled on that one. For this particular parcel of stalking ground, Roy has one last blast. We think we've drawn a blank, but Mike, who's been waiting to pick us up on the other side of the field, thinks otherwise. Apparently he right. saw a couple I, come I through. I saw two does coming out of this, this, this hedgerow, and they ran across this open field um, behind you. Right, so they were coming in behind us. As... I presume they were coming into your call. Um, they were probably trying to use the wind and, and come around behind you. Yeah, makes sense. To so. see what was going on. That's it. So there, was, there was nothing chasing them, they just, they just came out into the open field and 
and went across there quite fast. Excellent. So they were. Uh, there was definitely response there. There was. Even though we didn't see a lot from That's that right. side. <laughs> Excellent. Time for a change of setting and a change of stalker. Mike is looking after us now and he'll be taking us through some really beautiful woodland. We spot hares and a black squirrel en route. The rain and some late feeding under the full moon might mean these little deer are tricky today, tucked up in the relatively long grass. So opportunity knocks again and Roy puts himself against a background that really shows the benefits of camo. This time it's a complete blank. However, this next effort shows that the muntjac might be responding, but not in the same way as other deer. After a couple of minutes of calling, we start to move and Mike spots movement. There are about half a dozen deer behind us. The closest is this nice metal buck. Roy continues to keep him interested. We even see him scrape the earth. He's too nice for us, but the guys here do have some impressive animals for trophy hunters. We can offer up to gold medal. Obviously, you're not going to go out and get a gold medal on your first stalk. So normally we say, you know, you've got to book in, you know, probably four stalks to get yourself a, a medal head. There's no guarantee because it's stalking, you know. But what we have got is probably more deer than, than most people. We're quite lucky. I mean, the origins of, of Muntjac and Chinese water deer was at Woburn, which is obviously not far away. Um, and we've got the right terrain uh, here, you know, a lot of bramble. Uh, a lot of rushy ground, ideal for uh, the environment of, of Muntjac. So uh, we've, we've got plenty, it's just finding them that's, that's a, the problem. After our standoff, we move on and cause some more fascinating behaviour. We plonk ourselves in the open and start calling. Mike has never heard anything like it. We think there are five separate bucks barking. None show, but a few yards up the ride we spot an injured doe. She's limping, but Roy can't get a clean shot. We head into the cover to try and find her, and more muntjac break cover. Goodness knows how many deer we have passed unsighted. When we find our way back to the ride, a heavily pregnant female is grazing about 150 yards in front of us. Roy takes his opportunity. She's hit hard and goes down a few yards from the spot. That worked out well. We had that little doe that we were trying to get that disappeared off up there and she had a broken leg. Unfortunately, we couldn't get onto her. Um, I just couldn't get a clear shot through the, uh, the wood there. Um, came out onto the ride and uh, a very heavily pregnant doe standing just up the ride there. Um, perfect broadside shot and uh, away we went. So yeah, fantastic day. Absolutely superb. Yep. Muntjac appeal to stalkers here and abroad, and this type of hunting is also relatively cheap for cull animals, and it's not as easy as many believe. It's a very tricky sort of stalking, it is. Um, you, you tend to bump more deer than you, than you get a chance to shoot at, or even think you're going to shoot at. Well, as you can see, that, 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 as, as we've come through the woods now, um, and yet this morning, first thing, we saw very little, and no response to the call in the wood earlier on. And all of a sudden you get four or five deer all, all of a sudden want to, want to uh, show interest. I think that must be the main difference with the, the muntjac though, because they're rutting all year round. Yes. You've just got to find a buck that's receptive that's right. at the time. And, and he gets everybody going. Yeah. Roy finishes the gralic and this compact little carcass can be tucked away in a backpack. It's back to base for a coffee and it's a chance for Mike to talk to Roy about how to get the muntjac responding to the call. For me it was very interesting because when we were out in the open field, we just did a few little peeps and we had one coming in through the crop. Yeah, um, I think with, in the wood, we've got a lot of cover in the wood at the moment. If we could, if we could have seen more, I think yeah. you'd have seen those deer approaching. Yeah. They seem to be getting closer. That's it, because with the, the big buck, as he was coming in, he was coming in behind. Yes. But we'd already moved from the position because we thought nothing was coming. But That's right. Yeah, he was obviously, right. obviously just sneaking up behind us. Yeah. But no, I think with it, I, I don't know. I mean, obviously, it's, uh, it'll be interesting to see other people's experiences with, uh, with calling the muntjac. But, you know, when I was, when I was doing it there... Obviously just emulating what we do really with the row, but trying it a little bit softer. So it's just a... Right. A few little peeps there. Mm. Obviously you can you vary the volume, etc., depending on how hard you push down on it, and also you can put it in your pocket to mm -hmm. muffle the sound, or uh, you know, whichever way it goes. But it was, I, th I think the other thing that surprised me was the, the distance that, that um, one of the deer um, that came out of the, the, the side of the wood picked it up from. Mm -hmm. So he picked that up from a, a good few hundred yards away, away, and we weren't yeah. doing it that loudly. So I think it probably needs to be a little bit softer and spend a little bit more time on the calls and, and, and see what happens. And wait for a little, yeah. a, a little longer afterwards. Yeah. yeah.
Well, it's certainly something that I, sh I should experiment with. It's, yeah. it's new to me, and I'm, no, it's it. it's, I'm, uh, I'm grateful that you've, uh, you've shown me it. No, it's, well, it's, it's just, uh, I mean, it was fantastic just watching the behaviours there, wasn't mm, it? So, mm, mm. yeah, another little tool in the, uh, the, the kit. The That's it. It's been a fascinating morning stalking bucks in Bedfordshire. And if you want to know any more about the stalking offered by Jason and Mike, check out their website, www.muntjackstalker.com, and drop them a line. This has been Field Sports Britain on our very own Scottish Stag Do. Or maybe they don't. Join us again next week, and in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe or drop us a line via Facebook and Twitter. Mm -hmm.